Well, beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today is an exciting day for the church. Do you know what day it is and why it's exciting? Today we celebrate the Reformation. 497 years ago, next Friday, a young monk of 34 years walked boldly up to the door of the castle church in Wittenberg, Germany, carrying a written document in one hand and a hammer in the other. With one defiant gesture that burst with conviction, he took a nail from his pocket and hammered it loudly to the door while people watched in amazement. The name of this young man, of course, was Martin Luther. The document he nailed on the church door was the 95 Theses. This 95 Theses clearly outlined the errors and the failures and the sins of the church of his day. What happened on that day, nearly 497 years ago, was the start of the great Protestant Reformation. So just why is this still a day of importance for the church of today? Well, the answer should be obvious. As Christians, we must be concerned with the message of the church. We continually need to assess ourselves in the light of God's inerrant word, his inerrant truth. So yes, this is a thrilling day for the church because it gives us another chance to look at ourselves and see if who and what we are is still correct and true. It gives us an opportunity to see just what kind of a body the church really is. It allows us to honestly ask, why are we here? The Bible tells us we are to be a cleansed church. The Bible tells us we are to be a glorious church. The Bible tells us we are to be a church without spot or wrinkle, a holy church without blemish. Jesus died for this church. Jesus died for Central Lutheran Church. Christ died for every Christian church in the world. I mean, just think of that. He loved the church so much that he gave himself for it. Isn't it thrilling to have someone love us so much that he would die for us? However, the church hasn't always been what Christ intended it to be. It has been de decisive. It has been self-righteous and cruel. It has been corrupt. It has been evil. It has been proud and boastful. And it has fought with itself through centuries of time. But thank God that there have been men like Martin Luther. Thank God there have been men like Martin Luther in this world and in the churches of today who have always called the church back to its true purposes in reformation, its true purposes in restoration, and its true purposes in transformation. And men like that have always been focused on true cleansing to stay true to the word of God. These have always been part of the church's heritage part of the heritage since the beginning and will be until the end of time. God has preserved his church. He always will. That is why this day is such a glorious one. Today is a day to re-examine ourselves. Today is a day that gives the church the best opportunity to take a stand for all that is right and correct. And it gives us a clear opportunity to establish once again our priorities for serving our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today's reading is found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 25 and tw through 27. I would ask if you're able to rise out of respect for the word. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. These are your holy words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is the only truth. Please be seated. 
Now our text for today is one of the most common for husbands to hear at a Christian wedding. However, our focus this morning will not be in a, in a wedding context, but we'll focus on Christ, we'll focus on the Christian, and we'll focus on the church. One thing that is clear, the church's sole purpose is to be the place where we come together to hear the pure word of God. And within the true Christian church, the Bible is the sole authority. The Latin words sola scriptura, word alone, are celebrated with our Reformation history. We have no other message than what the inerrant word of God teaches. You see, with very few exceptions, politics and social issues should be kept out of the church. Because coming together for other reasons than to hear the word of God truthfully taught and preached has been one of the most common errors of many who attend churches now. Today the church is being rather busy, if you will, trying to bring the world into the church instead of bringing the church out to the world. Today the church is too busy taking the secular club atmosphere, the lights, the action, the loud, and replacing the time-tested, humble, and reverent focus on hearing the truth of God's Word. And it's sad that many Christians are no longer interested in or encouraged to just sit quietly and reverently hearing the Bible's eternal truth taught. And solid biblical truth is what most of us need. And it is certainly the most important thing for our lives. 2 Timothy 3.16 reads, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. But it is the church that must determine for itself to preserve the pure word of God. And unfortunately, for many years now, we have grown very careless regarding this preservation. The Bible today is under great attack, and it's under attack by the church itself. The Bible's inerrancy is being slandered, both inside and outside of the church. Its message is often regarded as impossibly untrue or changed to accommodate human reason and understanding. And this is not only happening within the fringes of the Christian church. This is taught within many mainstream churches now who have chosen to destroy many aspects of biblical inerrancy as simply not possible. And then we have churches who continue to split over doctrinal positions, arguing over the infallibility of Holy Scripture. And liberalism has surely reared its ugly head within the contemporary church. Political correctness is the word of the day, not God's inerrant truth. And unfortunately, many church members and even some church pastors sleep the sleep of death while this great battle for the preservation of the word of God rages. It seems to be that there's only a few who are willing to be soldiers of the cross and be brave enough to be taking a stand under God's word, no matter the cost of them personally. But in reality, most just couldn't care less. But the real conflict in the church today is over the authority of the Bible. And this is where its members need to wake up and take up the fight. Because, my friends, we are to keep God's word and his church pure. Ephesians 5.27 So that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Yes, it is time to be conscious, aware, and alert. And this Reformation Sunday is a good time for all of the redeemed to declare themselves as loyal to the pure word of God and keep our theology 
uncontaminated from this world. Reformation Sunday is the time to declare, I will take a stand for my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I will try with all my heart to keep the message of the gospel pure. And I will support my church to preach and to teach the truth of God's word. So Christians, wherever you are, demand that our churches and our seminaries teach the infallibility of Holy Scripture. And we must support all zealous organizations that uphold our inerrant Bible. Word alone, our Bible. Sola Scriptura. So support organizations like Central Lutheran Church because that's what this world needs is the truth of Scripture. Because if we don't take a stand for institutions that support Christ and Him crucified, if we don't take a stand for those who support biblical truth and biblical inerrancy, if we don't take a stand for the faith, this country will fall. The truth of the Bible if we don't stand for it, will be taken from us. The Bible is to remain true and unblemished. You know, there is no doubt that this is a critical time in history. Certainly with the wars continually occurring in the Middle East, we are beginning to find ourselves in prophecy. Surely part of that prophecy is that people are going to have itching ears and they are going to wander away from the Bible's truth. Scripture tells us they will listen to all kinds of false teachers. They will listen to all kinds of false teachings and all kinds of false doctrines and only seek out that which appeals to their own desires and their own reason and their own lifestyle. And that makes them feel good. 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4 reads, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. But isn't it good to hear that Reformation Sunday can be a day of cleansing for all of us. Isn't it good to hear that Reformation Sunday can be a day that will put everything back into its proper perspective and rightly realign our priorities? And the first priority is that the Bible's truth will be forever and always the unblemished Word of God. Matthew 24, 35 reads, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. I am ready to take a stand for my Lord. Are you? Now even though Reformation Sunday for Lutherans is a day that we distinguish ourselves from Romanism, the real point of the Reformation service is to declare ourselves true to the Word of God. And the true church is the place where we must rightly divide the law and the gospel. The co-mixing of the law and gospel has been one of the continuing plagues upon the church that has been occurring through the centuries to this very day. Luther was certainly confronted with this problem. In Luther's day, salvation was by works, indulgences and meritorious achievements, climbing stairs, counting beads, possessing certain relics, praying certain prayers to certain saints. All of this was part of the Reformation past, but we are confronted with this problem still. Luther took a stand. He clarified what the Bible says. He cleansed the church of his day. However, many churches still need cleansing. They need cleansing from this atrocious mixing of law and gospel. 
People are trying to save themselves by the law. Salvation today is still equated with works. Many take the position that if they are good, and if they try to do better all of the time, and if they try to lead a decent moral life, that they're Christian. This is incorrect thinking. And this incorrect thinking is the biggest misconception of our day. You see, when people think this way, they are mixing the law with the gospel. And then there are those who also insist that certain practices must accompany faith in Christ. If I'm a Christian, I can't do this or that. And what these people are doing, they are inserting legalism or the intervention of the law into faith. And this is wrong. And this, too, is very common among Christians. And frankly, if we're honest with ourselves, we all have some peculiar hang-up or practice as to what we can or cannot do in order to be a Christian. But Reformation Sunday is a day of cleansing to clean out these concepts of having to do some specific work in order to be a true saved Christian. Loved ones, we are saved solely by the grace of God. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 reads, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God not a result of works, so that no one may boast. We are saved by God's unmerited grace and favor. Jesus did it all for me when he lived the perfect life and died on the cross. This is grace. Grace so amazing and grace so divine. There is nothing I can do to add to this. No laws, no rules, no regulations. God doesn't need anything from me, folks. But I need everything from him. You see, I'm saved only by his free gift. I am saved only by his grace. Sola gratia. By grace alone I am saved. So I hope you understand what I'm saying. I hope you got it straight. Because it really is just that simple. But most people just don't get it. Good church members get this all wrong. They never let God really save them through Christ alone. They want to add things to their salvation. But Reformation Sunday is a day to remind us that the law of God must never be mixed with his gospel. The law has one purpose. The law is to show us how bad we really are. The law is to let us know that we are in deep trouble. The law's only purpose is to show us that we cannot, no matter what we do, keep it. You see, it is the law of God that shows us how desperately we need help. It is the law that drives us to Christ. It is the law that shows us we cannot do it ourselves. The law shows us just how hopelessly lost we are on our own and how much we need a Savior. And after we have accepted Christ's offer, of salvation, the law offers guidelines for how to live a God-pleasing life. But my dear friends, the law never saved one single soul. So stop trying to save yourself through it. Reformation Sunday is a day to realize with strength and clarity that the church is a place where we have a true mission to perform. As Christians, we are to take a stand for every man, every woman, and every child who is not saved by God's grace. Concern for souls is the church's one true function. 
This is what we stand for. So let me ask you, are you concerned for souls? How many souls have you personally invited to come to Christ? Let's be honest. Many church members all across this land lose sight of that which is primary and lose their reason for being. Loved ones, we are here simply because God loves you so much and has given you the church. And as a member of the church, we are under command to tell others about it and to bring them under God's grace. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you until the end of the age. You know, sometimes I think I should just use this one slide and these two verses for every sermon. Just leave it up there every Sunday then maybe we, the Christian, will take a stand and really know why we are living here in this sinful world. My friends, we are to go out and proclaim Christ to everyone. And some of you might be thinking, can't the pastor say something else? Because I say this a lot, don't I? No, I can't. And I won't. Because we are commanded to invite our friends. We are commanded to invite our neighbors. We are commanded to even invite our enemies to come to church. Every Christian is on a rescue mission to save the lost. We have no other purpose here at Central Lutheran Church. None. Our church and every Christian church today has been given this tremendous opportunity, the opportunity to go out to the world and bring souls to Jesus. Folks, that is taking a stand for Christ. That is our only true function as a church. We have been given a clear mission so are you willing to go out and ask others to come with you to church? Our mission of telling others about the gospel message must be performed, not as a work, but out of our love for Jesus Christ because we are totally thankful for his unmerited grace and favor towards us. And there is no other motive that is worthy of anything. There is only one motive for the church, love and faithfulness to God. And it is this one motive that we share that message of Christ with those who do not yet know him. Every Christian should think about the lost all the time. They will die eternally without knowing Jesus. That is why it's so important for the Christian to witness to the lost. Just look at these great words from the Apostle Paul about how the Christian should think about the lost. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. If you are a Christian, don't take credit for it, but be thankful to God for his tremendous love that saved you and gave you the desire to save others. This Reformation Sunday is a time to take a stand, my friends, and proclaim the message of Jesus Christ to the world and to the people that you know who are lost. We are not to be just hearers of the word. We are to be doers also. What an opportunity this day brings for the Christian. It's a day to reclassify the message and mission of the church. Let us show our grateful hearts and present Central Lutheran Church to the Lord as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, simply by letting Jesus wash every one of us clean 
by his truth, his word. Today gives me an opportunity to look at my heart to see if I really love Jesus. So let this be a day in which I reaffirm the gospel for myself. Then let me go out and share this good news with others in our community and in our world. This is the spirit of the Reformation. This is what we must do. So get out your hammer and nail and let's go do it. Glorious Father, your message is so clear for the Christian. We are to take a stand for you, Lord. We are to take a stand no matter the outcome for us personally. And the reward is so great. Let us have courage, let us have strength and conviction to witness to those in our community and bring them to you, Lord, so that they can have the hope of eternal life with you in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.